I'm Dr. Langley. I'm a family medicine doctor, and one of the big parts of my job is evaluating people for urinary tract infections, or UTIs, or sometimes kidney stones, or sometimes signs of blood in their urine, all sorts of things that come down to pee. So one of the important things about being able to evaluate what's going on when someone has urinary type symptoms is to be able to catch, uh, to, to get a clean catch is what we call it, but I realize that that's not necessarily an obvious term to anyone not in the medical field. So a clean catch is referring to uh, catching urine, getting urine in a cup that's not contaminated by things. Because the thing is, there's a lot on the way out that the urine could be contaminated by. What we really want is urine that's straight from the bladder. And yeah, actually we could stick a really long needle right through your abdomen, really, really low on your pelvis, like right above your pubic bone, and do a bladder tap is actually what it's called, where we stick a needle in, can stick it right into the bladder, pull it out, get exactly what we need right from the source. Most people don't like that idea. It would be much more comfortable to just collect the urine on the outside. But then there's actually a pretty decent pathway for it to get contaminated. So, so if this is your bladder, whether you're male or female, if this is your bladder, you've got your ureters coming in from your kidneys, beautiful little beans there. And then there's a tube that leaves. And go, that's your urethra. And that, that, so what we want is the urine right here. X marks the spot, that's what we want. But it has to get past all this skin and the external skin, and those all have potential contaminants. So for example, there's bacteria that line your urethra as well as the skin on the outside. And we want to know if you have a, a bacterial infection in here. But if you, your urine collects, comes on its way out, collects a whole bunch of bacteria on its way out, and then we collect that in our cup, then we get a false positive. We, that's, not, that's not a real infection, but we're seeing those bacteria. Um, so we might uh, double check by sending that to grow on an agar plate, um, what's called a culture, uh, to see what kind of bacteria those are, and then it ends up being bacteria that live on the outside of your skin. So usually that's called a contaminant, uh, because we assume that bacteria that are grow that like to live on the outside with lots of air aren't going to be growing on the inside of your bladder where there's not lots of air. So how do you go about collecting a clean catch? So you want to use, uh, usually your, your lab or your doctor will provide a little special soap towelette it's a, it's a soap that's, that's not irritating to that delicate skin on the outside there, but it's also not foaming. It's not going to kill the bacteria uh, that are on their way out. It'll just kill the bacteria on site when you scrub, and then uh, when the bacteria, when the urine's on its way out, it won't mess with your results. So uh, if you're uncircumcised, you pull the foreskin back and you clean the head of the penis, or you, if you're a female, you uh, pull the skin on either side uh, away from the, where the pee comes out from the urethra. And you hold that out, hold that to either side, hold that with one hand, and use the other hand to wipe. Probably two or three towelettes just to make sure that you're really getting a chance for the soap to work and kill the bacteria. And then, ideally, uh, you catch the midstream urine because that on the way out, the urine is still going to collect some germs from the inside of the urethra. There, you want those to go in the toilet. So that would be the beginning of the stream of urine. You want to let a little urine out or to pee in the cup and dump that out and then to catch the rest of the urine in the cup. Uh, and that way it's, that's a midstream catch is what that's called. And then another thing that you can do to make sure that you're getting the best possible urine sample to figure out what's going on is actually to collect your urine first thing in the morning. Now that's because the, the urine has been sitting for a good amount of time overnight even if you had to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night, no big deal. It's a couple hours, though, of sitting in the bladder and letting the bacteria grow or letting whatever chemicals we're trying to detect in your urine build up. And that way there's more of it for us to see in your urine, so it's easier to identify. So that's why the first morning urine, first morning micturition is the medical word for urination. Micturition um, is the most beneficial for identifying things. Then ideally, if you're collecting this at home, um, you get a nice tight steel cup that you can put it in and you want to drop its temperature right away so that the bacteria don't have time to continue to multiply because your doctor just wants to know what was in your bladder at that moment. So ideally you actually put it into a uh, plastic bag or another container that has ice water in it 
um, with the ice cubes actually floating in the water. That's why it, that makes sure it's a nice low temperature. And then bringing that into your doctor to check. Or if you're at your doctor's office, easy enough. Um, so that's the best way to get a urine sample. Then just because it's kind of fun to know what happens next at your doctor's office. Uh, a lot of doctors have these urine reagent strips. So I don't know if you've ever seen like pool reagent strips or pH strips. So there's a tiny little piece of paper glued to each one of those. those each of those squares is a different uh, thing to detect uh, aspects, that qualities of your urine. So it tells you if you're dehydrated. It tells you if there's uh, white blood cells in it, if there's red blood cells in it, if there's uh, nitrates, which are byproducts of bacteria living in your urine. If there's, did I already say blood? If there's sugar, proteins, um, those will come up on the little strips, and then we have this nice little table to compare your strip with to see what qualities are in your urine. Another thing we'll do is put it, put uh, some of the urine in a tube and spin it down real fast so that any, even the microscopic cells go to the very bottom of the tube. Then we pour off the liquid upper part, and we take that bottom part and put it on a slide. We don't actually use the tube for that, we kind of tap it out. Um, put it on a microscope slide to actually see, because uh, sometimes there are things that make the urine look like it has blood in it. For example, if you ate beets last night and now your urine looks bloody, you will be very worried that maybe you have blood in your urine. Oh no. So that's why we would look at it under the microscope. That way I could look, hey, is this just generally red or are there actual red blood cells living in your you're in here that I can see because there's a big difference between those two. One is just from beets because beets are delicious, but they make your pee and poop look a little funny. Uh, otherwise, if there's blood in your urine, then we need to evaluate where that blood is coming from. Is it just irritation of the bladder from a UTI? Is it early signs of bladder cancer? All things we need to be looking into. Uh, so next time you do a uh, urine sample with your doctor, hopefully you can do a more accurate clean catch. It is a tricky thing to get good at. Uh, and it's important to help your kids if they have symptoms of, of urinary symptoms going on. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a good thing to teach them how to do. Um, the, the holding foreskin, holding labia apart, and, and scrubbing with a couple of these towelettes is the key part that I feel like is the, the part that most people miss out. I can tell if you didn't do a good job with that because I can see lots and lots of skin cells when I look under the microscope. So we're watching and we can tell if you do a good job or not. Uh, hopefully this is helpful. If you want to learn more about a similar subject, click on that video and please be sure to subscribe to our channel so you can find out when I post new things. Thanks for watching.